Hi, my name is Erin Hudson, Extension Entomologist at Iowa State University. Today I'm going to be talking about Japanese beetle management and corn and soybean. In the last three to four years, Japanese beetle has become a persistent agricultural pest in Iowa. The Japanese beetle was first confirmed along eastern Iowa in 1994. Since then, this invasive pest has slowly spread and is now confirmed in 55 of our 99 Iowa counties. Japanese beetles are closely related to mass chafers and June beetles. Adults are oval and somewhat boxy in shape and about one half inch long. It's a brightly colored metallic beetle with copper wings and a green head. Also, notice white tufts of hair along the side of the abdomen. The larva or grub is white with a brown head. Note, the grubs are always in a C shape and about one inch long when fully developed. Japanese beetles go through a complete life cycle with an egg, larva, pupa, and adult. There is just one generation per year. Grubs overwinter deep in the soil, and adults emerge from a pupal case in midsummer, peaking in early August. Individuals will feed, mate, and lay eggs for about two months. Japanese beetle adults have a large host range and will eat over 300 plants in 79 families. The adults are considered skeletonizers that consume leaf material between veins. Heavy feeding on leaves will make them appear scorched. They will also eat flowers and other delicate plant tissue. Japanese beetles like to aggregate when feeding and mating. In corn, adults will feed on silks, sometimes severely clipping them back to the ear. Adults also aggregate on soybean. The defoliation can be throughout the whole plant or sometimes just in the upper canopy. In corn and soybean, Japanese beetle populations can be highest at the field edges. I encourage you to scout the entire field to determine if beetles are distributed throughout. Most significant damage in corn occurs during silking. Consider a foliar insecticide if there are three or more beetles per ear, silks have been clipped back to less than half an inch, and pollination is less than 50% complete. Japanese beetles can defoliate soybean any time throughout the summer. Consider a foliar insecticide if there is more than 30% defoliation before bloom or 20% defoliation after bloom. In my experience, people tend to overestimate the percent defoliation in soybean. Use this reference guide to help gauge yourself. Remember, estimate the foliation based on whole plant counts and field-wide damage. If treatment thresholds are exceeded in corn and soybean, there are many insecticides labeled for Japanese beetle. Consider a border treatment as a cost-effective option if adults are aggregated at the edge. Unfortunately, you cannot expect season-long control with an insecticide. Heavily infested areas may need to be treated multiple times to protect yield. Also, be aware of variable pre-harvest intervals on the label. I hope this video helped you learn more about Japanese beetle management and corn and soybean. Good luck out there.